Hi there, this is Chris Lack, and this is a video introducing the basic anatomy of the chest x-ray and uh, how to think about x-rays when you look at them. So what I've done here is taken a relatively normal chest x-ray and a slice of a CT scan through the same patient. So when you look at an x-ray, it is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. So any point on the radiograph will be an average of the tissues that the x-ray had to pass through. So you can pick any point uh, along the x-ray and as you go from front to back the density or the brightness of that pixel is determined by all the structures that the x-ray has to pass through. The x-ray beam would have to pass through the skin, the subcutaneous fat, some of the chest wall musculature, a rib, a little bit of the lung, some of the epicardial fat, the left ventricle, and then go through a large portion of the lung, some rib in the back, some musculature, fat, and then skin before it reaches the film in the back. Now that is if you shoot the patient from the front to the back, and that's called an AP exam. This x-ray is a PA exam, so instead, we have the generator, x-ray generator, from the back, and we shoot the x-ray through the patient, and we have the detector on the front. And what this does, it allows the heart to be close to the detector, and so the heart does not appear as big and doesn't cover as much of the long lung, and it makes it easier to see the lung. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a PA and a lateral of the chest and pick out some basic structures. We'll start with the bones. So first of all we have usually 12 ribs on each side and for example here is the first rib and you can see it starts more horizontally in the back and then curves inferiorly and medially as opposed to the fifth rib which is going to be longer and more horizontal and then curving further down. So the, obviously the first rib is, is much shorter. Next is the clavicle, extending medially from the sternoclavicular joint all the way laterally to the scapula at the acromioclavicular joint. Next is the scapula itself, which we can see on both sides. We can also see the scapula on the lateral view here almost perfectly overlapping with each other. We can see the vertebral bodies of the thoracic spine. And finally, we have the manubrium and the sternum anteriorly. Next, let's look at the airway. We have the trachea in midline. The trachea splits into a right and left mainstem bronchi. It does that at the point called the carina, where the mainstem bronchi and the pulmonary vasculature exit the mediastinum to go out to the lungs. That's called the hyla. So we have a right hilum and a left hilum. The heart itself forms several borders. On the left side, we have the left ventricle. On the right side, we have the right atrium. Now because of the orientation of the heart, when we look at it on the lateral view, we have an anterior and a posterior border. The posterior border is the left atrium, and the majority of the anterior border is made up of the right ventricle. You can see the lung is filled with air, and therefore is dark, and when the air meets soft tissue, you end up with angles or lines, and some of those angles are important. For example, we have the costophrenic angles on both sides. And this is where the diaphragm meets the chest wall and ribs. And then medially we have the cardiophrenic angles. In the midline, a little bit off to the left, we can see portions of the aorta, the aortic arch up top, and then extending down the descending aorta. And notice how we see the left border much better than the right border. So why is that? Well things on the x-ray are easier to see when there are different densities touching each other. So here 
on the CT scan, you can see that the aorta has an outline on the left side with the lung, while on the right side it contacts the mediastinal fat. And therefore you don't see the right border very well, but the left border is easily appreciated. So that is a quick overview of some of the basic anatomy of the PA and lateral chest x-ray. And we'll use this anatomy and localize it on the chest CT during the lab.